Hi there, my name is Steve Stein and welcome to this video. What I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about fundamental strumming. Um, something that I think is really important for guitar players to learn about and sometimes when we're learning about strumming we don't really get the gist of um, the overall concept. The great thing about strumming is, is once you learn how to strum effectively, you've essentially learned how to strum to everything that you would ever learn subsequently from here on. Uh, so what I want to do is just kind of explain to you how this works. So chances are at this point you've been working on some chords and things like that, you know, A and D and E and those sorts of things, which is awesome. What you want to make sure that you're doing with your right hand though is understanding the rigidness of continually moving your arm when you strum. And I want to show you a quick example of what not to do and then I'll explain to you a little bit about what you should be trying to work on. So the first thing is, is when you make a chord, for instance, it, I'll just make G here, okay? So if I was going to play um, a song using G and I needed to strum it, the first question that most of my students will ask me, well, what's the strumming pattern? Okay, well, first of all, sometimes, most of the time actually, songs don't really have any one particular strumming pattern, they simply have a flow of, of rhythm. Now, some songs do have strumming patterns, absolutely. But here's the problem, is, is sometimes when we want to play a rhythm, people will do this sort of thing. And you can hear how it sounds very disjointed when you're playing. The goal with rhythm all the way around is everything should be sort of a perpetual motion when you're playing. Whether you're playing drums, whether you're playing guitar, whatever it is, everything should move. And the flow as guitar players that we have is the ability to move this arm back and forth. We move the right arm up and down. Okay? We don't start and stop and then like speed up and slow down because it would sound very, again, very disjointed. So the goal is, is to understand a really great thing for you to practice is a technique called scratching. And what scratching is, is where you simply touch all six strings with your hand. Okay? So what I'm doing, of course, is I'm putting my thumb behind the guitar. It's not on top. The problem with putting your, t your hand on top of the guitar like this, obviously, is, is that your fingers have very limited mobility because your wrist is sitting upward. You want to make sure that your wrist is down, thus the thumb being kind of in the back of the guitar there. And of course, everybody's hand sizes are different, so you got to kind of adjust that. But the point is, is that the wrist is sitting like this, so the fingers can move. That's ideally what you're looking for. So when you look at my hand, what you should notice is that I'm sitting fairly straight up and down with my hand. Okay? I'm not sitting back like this, and I'm not sitting like this. Okay? That's another issue that people have when they strum, or when they make chords and things, is that they try and do everything like this. Now, for like a D chord, that might be just fine. But then if you go try and play a C chord, you know, you'll notice that your wrist really has to, if you try and play it like this, it's really hard. If you move the elbow in, you give yourself some more freedom. So the goal with cording, which is in another video, but the goal with cording is getting your arm in the proper position when you're playing. You know, don't play like this, and certainly don't play like this. Try and turn the wrist down a little bit, and you see how my fingers are kind of straight up and down, okay? So now what I'm doing is I'm touching all the strings with my four fingers. I'm not pressing on them. I'm just touching them very lightly. And I'm getting the scratching sound. See, it doesn't matter where I scratch. So when you're watching this video and you're, you're watching me, it doesn't make a difference if you're at the third fret or the fifth fret or the sixth fret. All you're doing is touching with all four fingers. And as long as I'm not pressing hard, I'm going to get this clicking sound. Well, that's what we're going to use for scratching. So a great example to do is to take one of your favorite songs, preferably something that is relatively slow and mellow, you know, whether it be, you know, Bob Seger or Bob Dylan or, I mean, it could be anybody, but, do, but just something that's, that's relatively mellow, uh, the Eagles or, um, you know, I mean, just, just a ton of other different things, but something that isn't overly fast, something that isn't overly heavy and certainly not a bunch of time changes and things like that, just something straightforward. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to tap your foot to that song. So let's say you're listening to the song and you hear the beat here. That's where you want to place your down strums. Okay? Now we can refer to those, for instance, as quarter notes, but the truth is it doesn't really matter what we call it. What's most important is that whatever it is we're going to call it, that you can feel the rhythm in your arm. Just back and forth. Now what you're going to notice as I'm doing this is that I'm also having to strum upward to do another down. It's just at this point, because I'm just doing the down strums, you don't really think about the up strums, but they are there. If you watch me play, the ups are in between every time. So what that means is I could pick the, or strum the ones, excuse me, strum the ones in between those.
And what you should notice is as I'm playing, my arm just keeps moving. Everything is just moving. Down, up. Okay, so the first one I did was down, 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 up, down. Okay, and the second one I did was down, up, down, up, down, down. Now here's the truth. When you're playing along with songs a lot of times, uh, I'll use old time rock and roll as an example. A lot of times when you're playing songs like that, you might listen to it and you hear the beat and you're tapping your foot, but you don't really hear like a strumming guitar in the background. I'm sure there is one, but you don't really hear it because there's all this other instrumentation happening. So the first question people always have is, or, or has a, is, well, what do I do with this? How do I strum it? And the truth is, you just kind of make something up. Now, here's your two choices. You can always strum a prescribed pattern that you've been working on with a song. For instance, down, 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 up, down. The problem with that is, is if you do the same thing for, you know, four minutes straight, chances are you're going to get bored, and whoever's actually trying to listen to you play is probably going to get bored as well. So that's the beauty of shaking things up, is understanding as you're moving your arm, It never stops on one side or the other. So what you can learn how to do is just simply move away from the strings. Now watch, I'm gonna keep strumming, but I'm gonna move away from the strings entirely. See, I've still got my rhythm going, I'm just not hitting my strings. So at any time, I can come in and go back out. And honestly, that's how we create space when we're strumming, is we move away from the strings and then come back. If we move away for a larger period of time, obviously we're gonna get a larger space. And that's okay, you don't wanna stop strumming. You know, the goal isn't to go Because even if you're really good at it, the problem is, is that there's no flow to it. And what I found a long time ago with strumming is once you can start sort of balancing out what you're trying to do with your right arm, your right hand, Everything just becomes easier. Every song that you play from here on out just becomes easier. So when you're playing... See, I'm not really thinking about which downs or ups I'm hitting. I'm just playing. And yes, it takes some time to get used to that. But you can see how if, if I was to start and stop at different points and then create some sort of strumming pattern from starting and stopping, that wouldn't relate to the next song or the next song after that or the next song after that. If I can just keep moving and just learning how to hit and miss different things, that will relate to every song that comes after this. It might be slower, it might be faster, it might be in 3-4 time or again 4-4 four, four time or whatever it is, but the motion of my arm is still going to be constant, okay? So that's the first thing I want you to start learning about when you're dealing with strumming, is trying to get comfortable. So it's moving your hand back and forth. Take a song that you really like, you like to listen to, whatever it is, um, and scratch to the song. Find where the downs go, put those in. Make sure you really do feel where those downs are. You know, you should be able to keep the downs going to the song for the entire song. You should be able to do that multiple times. Just keep that down strum going the entire time. It might seem monotonous, but in the, in the bigger scheme of things, it's gonna be huge for you. Um, and then the second thing is, is once you get comfortable with doing those downs, you start trying to throw an up strum in between. Like for instance, maybe you just do down, 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 up, down, like we talked about. And you try and do that over and over and over. When that becomes really easy, maybe you try and do two different ones. You're going down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 back and forth, you see? The point though is, is that if you were doing those two patterns and you got mixed up and you did something else, don't feel bad about it and actually that's wonderful. That's kind of the point, is after a while, you won't really think about which ones you're hitting or missing, you're just gonna keep moving your arm and kind of make things up. It's kind of like if I said to you to play um, uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star with your hand and you went. <laughs> See, what you wanna do is not think about it as downs or ups or one and two and three, you just wanna hear the rhythm. <laughs> See what I mean? Uh, the Itsy Bitsy Spider, if I went. Whatever, you know what I mean? The goal is is that you start feeling the thing in your hand uh, versus, versus trying to think about a, an actual strumming pattern. So let's start with that. I want you to start working up 
the basic functionality of just moving your arm back and forth, doing down strums, and then slowly start incorporating up strums.